Hello there! Welcome to the Apollo Solar Water Heating Installation Online Training Part 5. In this video, we will be going through the high pressure and low pressure tube installation, the differences between the types of tubes, and how one can identify broken tubes. Vacuum Tube Installation After the frame is assembled and tank placed on the frame, loosely attach the bolt to the bottom of the tank. Do not fully tighten the bolt, as some play is still needed for the adjustment in order to line up the tank with the vacuum tubes. We will now prepare the vacuum tubes. Dip the dust rings in some soapy water to reduce the friction to make it easier to slip onto the glass tubes. The following points will apply to high pressure and low pressure systems. For high pressure systems, First, prepare the vacuum tubes by finding the heat transfer cream in the triangle box which is wedged inside the tank box and evenly but generously spread the heat transfer cream onto the copper tip. After preparing the vacuum tubes, we can start clipping in the tube holders. Begin by placing the top clip into the slot and pressing firmly on the bottom until you hear it click in. Repeat for the remaining holders. Now to slot in the vacuum tubes. First unscrew the bottom of the tube holder and slide the vacuum tube through the holder. Make sure the tube is perpendicular, or in other words 90 degrees to the geyser. Then adjust the water tank until the heat pipe is directly in the centre of the hole on the water tank. Slide the vacuum tube gently into the tank. Take care that the centering silicone seal is not pushed downwards into the tube as this will cause heat loss and inefficiencies. Finally, carefully screw the bottom of the tube holders back on. Remember to always install a tube on either side of the tank to calibrate the angle, then tighten the bolts underneath the tank to secure the positioning before continuing to install the rest of the vacuum tubes. For low pressure systems, prepare the vacuum tubes by lubricating the opening side of the tube in some soapy water to allow it to more easily slip into the tube opening. As a reminder, please don't forget to slide the dust rings onto the tube before inserting into the tube opening. Optionally, gently lubricate the inner rubber seals situated just inside the tube opening. Please take care to not dislodge the seal. After preparing the vacuum tubes, firmly push and twist the tubes into the tube opening just so the bottom clears the tube holders. Please do not force the tube in if you encounter significant resistance, as you may dislodge the inner rubber seals, rather re-lubricate the tube and inner rubber seals again and try to adjust the tank angle before trying again. Then align the bottom of the tube to the tube holders and gently pull the tube out until the bottom rests comfortably in the holder. Please note that Apollo low pressure systems do not require rubber rings seated in the tube holders. Like the high pressure system, install a tube on either side of the tank to calibrate the angle. The vacuum tube should sit in the center of the opening with equal distances to the edge of the opening where the dust rings will slide over and cover. Then, tighten the bolts underneath the tank to secure the positioning before continuing to install the rest of the vacuum tubes. Differences between evacuated tubes The difference between a high pressure or split system vacuum tube and a low pressure vacuum tube. Low pressure vacuum tubes transfer heat directly while the high pressure or split system tube transfers heat indirectly via the copper heat pipes and the aluminium fin inside the vacuum tube. To expand further, the low pressure vacuum tubes work with direct heat transfer where the evacuated glass tubes are filled with water and exposed to the sun, thus heating up the water within the glass tubes. As cold water has a higher density than hot water, the hot water in the glass tubes will rise towards the insulated water tank and the cold water in the tank sinks into the glass tubes. This process is known as thermosiphon and is based on natural convection. As this cycle is repeated, water stored in the solar water heater gets heated. 
The high pressure version utilizes the indirect method, where the vacuum tubes heat up the heat pipe which in turn transfers heat to the inner tank. The selective coating on the inner cover of the evacuated tube converts solar energy into heat energy and transfers heat to the heat pipe by aluminium fins. The liquid inside the heat pipe changes into vapor which rises into the condenser. The heat then passes through the heat exchanger and the vapor becomes liquid, returning to the base of the heat pipe. The heat then conducts through the condenser pocket or bullet via heat transfer cream which then in turn heats up the water stored inside the tank. This transference of heat into liquid creates a continuous circulation as long as the collector is heated in the sun. Some feature highlights of the evacuated tube systems. Cost and value. Each individual tube can work independently and the whole system can still work if one tube is damaged. The useful life of the heat pipe can be longer than 15 years, but with flat plates, the whole panel needs to be replaced if damaged, which significantly increases expenses. Efficient design The circular design of the vacuum glass tube allows sunlight to pass at optimal angles throughout the day, but when it comes to flat panels, the sun rays will only be incident at noon for peak absorption. Higher heat efficiency Vacuum tubes can reach temperatures up to 90 degrees Celsius, whereas flat panels cannot reliably perform above 60 degrees Celsius. Flat panels are also more susceptible to ambient heat loss. Wide applicable range. Evacuated tubes have excellent performance even in extreme cold conditions as compared to flat panel. Due to the vacuum in the glass tube, which allows tube to retain high percentage of heat collected, evacuated tube can be used in sub-zero temperatures without the system sustaining damage. Flat plate collectors often experience freeze damage and burst during cold weather, especially inland or high altitude regions. Ease of installation. Evacuated tubes have lighter components and are easier to handle during installation and replacement where each individual tube can be removed and replaced on its own, while flat plate collectors are heavier and can be more difficult to install in general. How to identify a broken tube To tell if a vacuum tube is broken, meaning that the tube is no longer under a sealed vacuum state, first one can look at the bottom tip of the tube. If the tip is no longer a silver reflective color, this means that the tube has lost its vacuum and no longer effective at heating up the water. A second way to tell is if the inner part of the vacuum tube loses its dark violet color and becomes almost a pale murky blue color. Third and most obvious way is visually checking for any visible cracks. Take care to not injure yourself on broken glass if the tube is cracked. Packaging Depending on the system you have purchased, high pressure and low pressure system tubes come in boxes of 10, 12 and 15 pieces. Split systems come in boxes of 8, 10, 12 and 15 pieces. Thank you for watching this video on vacuum tubes. See you next time!